I have a very complicated relationship with money. I think it's been inherited. My parents didn't know how to manage money. That was a poor decision. I, I definitely shouldn't have gotten a brand new car for that much, especially a car that is a seasonal car. I probably have too big of a heart and do too much for other people and get myself into situations. Life just started happening and I can't even really put my finger on when it happened or what exactly happened, but I just started needing money that I didn't have. I think I just have one personal loan. It's for about 5,600 or something like that, but they added crazy interest to that. So it's like 11,000. Hi everybody. My name is Kevin Jackson. My stage name is Kevy the Dreamer. I am 33 years old. I am from the state of Ohio. I have a very complicated relationship with money. I would say over the past couple of years now, I've been trying to unlearn things that I was taught that was the incorrect way and what I was never taught by my mentors and the people that raised me. Okay. In your opinion, it's an evolving journey. Even you're 33, but you're still coming to grasp, grasp with what really money is and how to really deal with it. And it's not you alone. Majority of adults in US, they really have no clue how to best handle money. So even if they come across money, they are not able to manage it well. And then they find themselves struggling pretty much all their life. That's the unfortunate truth of our country. But at least you realize that and you're trying to make amends. That's great. We will find out what the journey has been. So Kevin, you said you are in Ohio. What do you do there? So I am currently a travel nurse. I've been a nurse for 13 years now, and I've been traveling since 2015. Oh, that's great. And it's very interesting. I got interested in this profession more from knowledge perspective because I was looking at Airbnb or not really Airbnb, but rentals. I think your demographic travel nurses are considered prime target rather, if I may say, if you can get travel nurses to rent from you, it's longer term, not like Airbnb that requires a lot of management. And I think a lot of your travels either is covered by companies or your hospitals. So how has your experience been? How many months in a year you travel? So I travel full time for my job. I travel 12 months out of the year. I've done both. I've rented apartments. I've stayed at Airbnbs. I've stayed with family. The primary thing that I've done is renting before I learned about Airbnb. I've even stayed in hotels. So I've done all of it. And how does it work with your expenses when you are traveling? Are you supposed to take care of your own expenses or is it covered by the company or the hospitals that you work for? So the company that I work for, they provide a stipend for us based on our assignment. It, it just depends where we're working at, the hospital, the location, cost of living, things like that. But we get a stipend, we get a meal stipend, we get a living stipend. I'm trying to think of what else. Those are the big ones. And basically, they don't necessarily provide it. They don't pay the tab for me. They just give me money towards it. And then we take care of it ourselves. The money is tax-free. So that's what the benefit of traveling would be. And we find our living, we get our uniforms. A lot of this stuff is tax deductible, which is something that you learn along the way. They don't really teach you that. From some perspective, company giving you a set amount of money, the stipend, as you put it, is actually good because that allows you the flexibility to deal with it the way you want. But in the hands of somebody who is not really well informed, it may become difficult for you. Some people may, may would rather that you just take care of my expenses and don't let me handle money. So it depends upon where in the spectrum you lie, how good are you in managing money. It can actually be very lucrative. If you are able to manage your expenses very well, it can be lucrative as well. And you say you have been doing it since 2015. So I take it that you like what you're doing and it's, it's working out for you. I prefer it over being a staff nurse. It does give me a little bit more freedom. Oh, so before that also, you were in the same profession, just a staff nurse? Yes. So nursing is what you have done. Yes. You went to school for nursing clearly there? Yes. Okay, nice. So in terms of income, what sort of income do you, what sort of money do you make being a traveling nurse? 
as a travel nurse, I do make six figures a year. I make the lower range. It just depends on my assignment, but typically I bring about 2000 home a week. I don't really go off of hourly because it just, there's the stipends and the things like that, the logistics, but it is a little more lucrative than being a staff nurse. But of course, with more money comes more problems and managing it yourself. Again, nobody really teaches you that. So that's where the problems kind of come in. Mm. Clearly. And then re this requirement of constantly traveling is itself quite a big, I think that's why probably it, it pays more because it's quite demanding, frankly. Not everyone can handle it, particularly after a while. Maybe you can do it for some time, but you clearly have figured out a way because you have been doing it for eight years. So that's great. That 2000 a week is very impressive. Is this apart from the stipend or are you also including any money that you might be saving or getting for stipend? It includes the stipend. That's what it pretty much amounts to. Okay. But still, it's very impressive bringing that kind of money every week should really set you up very well financially. If I were to ask you your current financial situation, will you say that you are very comfortable making that kind of money you are financially set or would you say that financially is still a challenge at this point in your life? I would be honest and say that my finances are a mess. I do make good money a week, but I have a lot of bills. So that's where all of my money goes to. Hmm. So that's interesting and that's another thing because we will definitely get into details of how you are placed and how you are managing your money. But in general, again, looking at the country, even people who make good money, like you, even six figures, do struggle with money. So sometimes people who have less money, they just think that somehow if I were able to make a little bit more money, my life would completely change. It will change. Definitely money can make a difference. But you also need to know how to manage money. Otherwise, the nature of your problems will change. The type of bills you get will change. But struggle with money doesn't change very easily. Okay. Let, let's look at your finances. At a high level, if you are bringing about 8K or more a month, like 2K a week, right? So that even if we just go with 1K a year, that, that's a pretty significant amount. What kind of expenses you have that the, even this is not enough? So tell me about your major expenses. Do you have a permanent home in Ohio, like where you travel out of and come back to? Yes. And I do have a mortgage, so that's part of it. I have a mortgage. I have a car payment. Both of those are pretty hefty. I have a lot of credit card debt. So a lot of that is trying to manage that and get that down. And then I just have a lot of other payments, loans, and basically payment plans and things like that, trying to manage things and trying to get those taken care of and paid off for different things like that. How much is the mortgage, Kevin? The mortgage is about 700 a month. It's at a good fixed rate, but my car payment is not so good. It's almost 800 a month. The rate is, I think, about 9% interest. It used to be a lot better, but some situations happened that I needed to use that uh, for collateral for something to help out a family member. So that's why that got increased. And that is one of my big goals is trying to decrease that. So, so mortgage at 700 a month with your kind of income, actually, I will say it's a steal. So in my opinion, that should be in win column. Car payment on the other hand, you said almost 800. Is it just for one car? Mm -hmm. What car is that? It's a 2018 Camaro. Okay, and how much you paid for it? I believe it was 45000 You obviously bought it brand new. Did you not have other debt at that time? I'm just trying to understand the psychology behind getting a brand new car at that price, even in I'm 2018. Sure I did. I'm sure I did. I, I just probably wasn't thinking about the debt. Looking back, do you think that was a good decision? No, that was a poor decision. I definitely shouldn't have gotten a brand new car for that much, especially a car that is a seasonal car and is a hot rod car. That was not the best decision. Okay. Also, had to die. I'll be honest and I'll be vulnerable. I had a lot going on at that time. My father had just passed away. So my mind wasn't all there. I can be honest about that. I appreciate that. Most of the time that happens, we tend to, we tend to think that we are rewarding ourselves by making a big purchase. It can be an emotional difficulty in life. 
sometimes even financial difficulty when we don't have money we'll go ahead and buy it on a credit card and deal with it later but just feel like i deserve it now uh, and those moments we are vulnerable it helps to have somebody mentor partner advisor in your corner during those situations who can think dispassionately without any emotions and tell you whether that's a right expense or not uh, so you bought it and you say that you, you obviously took a big car loan which is something which one should be very careful in fact i made a video about buying a car and i typically recommend that you buy a used car a slightly used car not very used but not brand new because initial years that's where the cars see most of the depreciation but at that time 2018 rates were pretty uh, uh, low i i wonder why you are paying 9% you said there something else went on so it was not 9% at the beginning it's been refinanced since then i don't even know how to put it into the right words i had to get money back to use for a situation that happened for a family member so that is why i'm currently at the rate that i'm at now it used to be a much better rate life happens and i probably have too big of a heart and do too much for other people and get myself in a situation so yeah he does he does and see there are two three things to look at it in this just short conversation that we had about your car one is obviously the car price and we spoke about that but then if i may even define it as an emergency where you needed money and it's your decision for example give money to my relative but you may so that's your call right but once you decide that you do need money there are different ways to get that money ideally you should have your savings to dip into you should be able take money out from bank and help somebody if you really want to you may have expense of your own which was unplanned so you always need to be ready for emergencies this tells me that you were not because when you needed that money for a situation you had to look at where can i basically get a loan from it can be putting your car as collateral personal loan or whatever going forward at least my advice to you and anybody in your situation is do plan for emergencies even if you think that i will never be uh, in that situation where i am going to pay for any relative in any scenario you may not but you may have to pay for yourself so you may still need that uh, stash of money somewhere preferably in a bank in a high yield savings account okay um now same question that i asked for the car looking back if the same situation arises you would still want to make that expense you won't right yeah sometimes you are under pressure it's very difficult to say no to loved ones <laughs> but i've seen that the amount of emotional and financial suffering that typically one experiences post saying yes it's not worth it and sometimes i don't know in your situation kevin but more often than not i have seen that relationship with the same loved one does not stay the same it actually impacts your relationship negatively even though you went out of the way to try and help somebody so most of the time it's not worth it frankly but you made that decision and you took a lien on your car and you're still suffering so how much is how much do you owe on the car today for which you are paying 800 a month today i want to say i have about 32000 left that's almost the entire car loan amount do you think the car is worth that much today probably not i'm sure it's depreciated since then yeah you would likely be underwater on the car loan do you have any plans for that car loan my plan is to one to get my credit to a better place so that i can refinance it and have a lower percentage i would like to pay it off at some point so that i have it and i do have a used car that i use more primarily than this car and to just learn from that experience and to never do anything like that why not sell it right now and not really refund and just get rid of it when you already have another right i would say because my other car is a lot older and because my current car i've just invested a lot into it and probably because it's a bit of my identity it's a nicer car it's called fallacy of sunken cost and it's true in any investment that you do if you invest in stocks for example and the stock goes down you invest some more thinking now it will come up it goes down further and at some point you feel like now i just can't sell it because i've already invested so much i want this to come up and then i'll sell but it keeps going down it applies to all of us it's very difficult to realize that this investment has not worked out and you need to cut your losses and stop it at some point 
right? So I will strongly recommend that you look at this car loan, look at the price of your car. Just for argument's sake, if your car is worth $27,000 and you're at $32,000, that means if you sell today, you will still be out $5,000. But $5,000 is all that you will owe on that car and it will not be depreciating anymore on you. You will not have this car payment. Like you are paying $800 a month, man. Even if you have to pay for that $5,000, it will be over in a year. That debt will be gone forever. And then you can start afresh. And with your kind of income again, once you get rid of this $800 a month of payment, that will also do wonders for your credit uh, score. Right? Now, you were saying that your credit score is not good. Where are you now? Let me think for a second because I stopped paying attention to it because it just kept going down. I think. I'm at about 600 or so. The lowest that I've been is 545, somewhere around there. It's because I'm using so much of my available credit on just bills and just living. With your kind of income, it's surprising that you'll have that kind of credit score. It really reflects that you have not been managing money well. I do have some of the statements that you have provided and pretty much, uh, not all, but there are many different credit cards that you have and all of them you are carrying balances and paying interest. Tell me, how does it work? Like you run up one credit card and then you go sign up for the next credit card or you had all these credit cards first and then you started using them one by one. Yeah, I've had them for a while and I life just started happening and I can't even really put my finger on when it happened or what exactly happened, but I just started needing money that I didn't have so I just started using them and now I'm using way too much and that's definitely impacting my score so I'm, I'm looking at your some of your statements Kevin and you do have a balance you're bringing all this money eight ten thousand dollar a month and you're not paying your credit card balances down so where is the money going today just living expenses so your living expenses it's just 1500 your car payment and rent and other miscellaneous expenses, say $1,000 for utilities and other home-related expenses. So we are just close to your week, maybe two weeks of your earnings for your, all your expenses. There is something wrong here. Something is missing. Like almost half of your money, I don't see on the statement about where it is really going. Are those all frivolous expenses or are these expenses that you are just not showing here, but you do have certain expenses. Are these all smaller expenses? Or are there any big expenses that we are not talking about? It's probably a mixture. I don't know, not looking at it and not off the top of my head. I just live life day by day trying to get through it. But I, I don't even know. It just is what it is. Okay, so I think let's quickly open up something and then quickly see what's happening. So I have this, your just so you can reference, right? Your Capital One card statement that you shared. And it, it says your previous balance was $3,000 roughly. And then you made a payment of just $126. How do you come up with that amount? Because that's not the minute. Because that's all I have to pay. I don't have any more to pay. When I make that payment, the money that I do have is going towards my bills. And then you paid 126 but you added $425 then that and the interest that you're paying obviously your new balance is much higher which takes you pretty much to your credit limit of $3,500 right but but I see into de details of what really you're spending money on these are all small expenses like food and pizza and uber do you ever do home food cook, cook at home or do anything or do you always buy outside I buy outside because I travel and I live between two places and my schedule is just absolutely crazy. That's a lot of it too, is traveling. Yeah, I do see a lot of Ubers all across. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Uber is making a lot of money off you. <laughs> and despite you having such an expensive car. Have you heard of a zero-based zero budgeting? Hey, hey. What it does, Kevin, is you take your income, take your expenses and create a budget for yourself that I have this much money coming in and then I decide what portion of that money will go to what expense. 
Right? So you know, like, if you have really $10,000 coming in, then you decide there are certain basic expenses that you just cannot change, like rent and, or mortgage, car expenses and a few. So two three thousand dollars you absolutely put there. For rest, you actually budget. You know you are traveling, so obviously you were you need to eat, but you put a budget in that, and that budget dictates how many times you can use it, how much you can expense. That should be a fair idea, but you do allocate a budget to it, and then you track it. There are apps that will track it for you, but what it does is it sets a limit for different categories, and then you do have a category for paying back your credit cards and also rather right you know that thousand dollars i'm paying for credit cards so that thousand dollars is dedicated to credit card it's not available for you to to go to a burger king or whatever uber right so you may have to do a shared uber if you are running low on your uber category budget similarly you may have to eat something cheaper that brings certain discipline so that you are not just spending money as it as you wish something like that may be really helpful for you because you do have a lot of cards with balances that you need to have a plan to pay off. As I see today, it doesn't look like you have a plan. You are paying minimum and then you are just letting it sit there. That way, it, it will never go away. It's just been a lot. It's just been a lot of different things in my life. And like we've said, just not being taught, not knowing how to manage it. I, I think it's been inherited. My parents didn't know how to manage money. My father made a lot of money and he spent it frivolously as well. He had a great credit score. He paid his money off. But I think that I just am just a product of what I guess I've always seen and not really realizing the effect that would have on me and not realizing that I do need to have a plan to get out of debt because I don't want to be in debt forever. I do want to be, again, financially free. I do want to be somebody that money is a resource and not something that I'm afraid of. So it's just been a difficult place navigating through that. And I find this very interesting, like how you made a statement about your dad. Growing up, you saw him making good money, but not being able to manage properly. And I'm sure you would have thought in your mind, I will not be like that. But you find yourself pretty much in the same situation. And that happens to all of us. Like you feel like I will not be like my parents. But that's what you most likely become. <laughs> because we do get impacted subconsciously more than consciously. Uh, but you do develop those same very thinking and habits. What I know about money is just what I've seen. And it's just been trial and error for me. At this point, and then that is also... Very true, Kevin. Many parents, they feel like they need to keep kids away from any money discussion. It almost, this is not something that good families do or religious family do, families do. It's almost like that, right? Money is evil. Let's not talk about it. Uh, but unfortunately, they set their kids up for a struggle in their life if they are not taught about money. And that's reflected here, like you yourself acknowledged. I'm seeing statement after statement that you have shared. Everywhere you're running balance and you probably, I'm sure you see it, all these credit cards. Like this one over here, it says 29.99% interest. So we are paying 30% interest on the balances that you're carrying. You don't need to be a math wizard to know that this will kill you. You are paying 30% interest on a loan. Credit card companies are very happy that you're carrying this balance and that is what is making them money. But you need to have a very aggressive plan, my man, to come out of your credit card debt. In fact, I told you about your card debt and that, that will be a start because then you save some money for a year or two. You just drive that banged up car that you have, the second car, and take that extra money that you're saving and shove it on credit card and then, then see... Uh, you really need to attack this credit card debt. Taken together, it's a lot. You have these four or five different credit cards that are all run up. And the method that I would recommend, you might have heard about, is a snowball method, whereby you take all your 
any money that you can save. Of course, pay the minimum on all cards. But on one of the cards, you pay as much as you can rather than paying all the cards. Your goal is to get rid of one card, credit card debt, completely as soon as possible. And that 2 3000 with your kind of income is not very difficult. You In just 2-3 months, you can get rid of all the debt on one particular card if you really go off to that. That will also give you a lot of comfort that this card is completely done and it will help your credit score. Tell me, Kevin, was it always like that? What year did you start working earning? Was nursing your first job itself? I started working at 15 years old at Dairy Queen and I actually used to save, I think it was $50 from every check. I remember when I started as a nurse, I graduated nursing school at age 19. I think by that point, there was a point in my life, I don't know if it was when I first graduated nursing school or if it was like a couple years after, I had $25,000 saved. Let me just stop you up just for a moment. You're saying you came out of graduate school with money saved rather than student loans like everybody does? Yeah, so I didn't have student loans for my associates. And you were able to save $25,000? Mm-hmm. By, by just working side jobs and all? that time that's incredible my man and i'm really curious about how you went from there i wish i could to where you are today because that's hallmark of somebody who is going to be very successful financially if somebody is coming out of college with twenty five thousand dollars in bank balance so I'm, i'm very curious what happened i just started using it on frivolous stuff and before i knew it the twenty five thousand dollars was gone and then i started but what flipped the switch cards Because you were a saver, something must have happened to flip the switch because you cannot just get up one day and say, now I'll spend it on frivolous stuff. It was probably making more money, having access to more money than what I was doing. I was flipping burgers at McDonald's at the time. And then I go from whatever, making minimum wage to making almost $20 an hour, bringing home, I have no kids, I live at home, bringing home almost 2000 every two weeks. I think that's what started it. What else? What did you start doing when you say living previously? Did you buy cars there? The big thing that I was doing at that time was buying clothes. I was addicted to buying new outfits, new shoes. That was when I was like early 20s. Um, Branded items, I assume? Okay. I don't really do that anymore, but now it's, I would say now it's the traveling. Now it's like, taking trips, not always work-related, that is probably the thing now, is if I don't have it in my on my debit card in my bank account, then I'll just go to a credit card, which is not healthy. No. Okay. Okay, now let's uh, go back. You were talking about what happened. So first you started spending money on clothes and all, and slowly starting running down your then I just started accruing a lot of credit card debt. Oh, you started then and there? Mm-hmm. And you get your first credit card. Was it in college? Yeah, I think it was in college. It was an American Eagle store card. Oh, it's store card. So currently I did not see, I, I do see some store cards. I do see a Walmart one, I believe. Yeah, I don't have those cards. It's a Target one. Long gone. Uh-huh. Okay. At, at least you got rid of the American Eagle one. <laughs> so store cards again, Kevin, you probably can testify to it, but I can, I'm can. i just telling my audience, the store cards, I should not pass a general judgment, but they're very risky. For majority of individuals, store cards are not good because stores want to give you some very small, like sometimes they'll say this, on this particular purchase, you save 20%, 30% and you take a card. That's just one purchase, but that card is going to stay with you forever. My strong recommendation would be to only do it for stores that you regularly visit for some necessary expenses. So if you are taking your grocery from Walmart or you have a big family and you're buying all their clothes from a particular place, be it Target or say a TJ Maxx, it may make sense if they're giving you some constant coupons and discounts. But be very careful Similarly, I own and I recommend people have Amazon credit card because pretty much everyone buys things stuff on Amazon, whether you have a credit card or not. You might as well get that 5% cash back. Same for Target. If you go to Target and not and 
spend regularly, yes, their card will give you 5%. But you have to be very careful because Target is, like people are known for going overboard at Target. So you have to be very careful unless you are disciplined. Don't go for store cards. Okay, so store cards, where you're undoing, huh? that's where you started right where I started. And then it okay. was downhill from there. Okay. Do you know what is the maximum balance you would have run up in a store card? At least, at least a couple, not a couple hundred, like at least a thousand, I think. Okay. Okay. And a particular trip will probably go to a few hundred. Mm -hmm. And you are a 20 year old and you have a store card. Do you really think about how you'll pay for it? Or at that point, it's easy because you're just going buying stuff and putting it on a card, right? I'm sure at that time, you're not thinking about how to pay. You're just looking at the how well this dress will look on you. Isn't that when I, and I have to say when I first started out, I I was good about I would buy I would make a purchase and then I would either immediately pay it off or I would pay the majority of it off. I guess life just happened. I just started using it credit for stuff that you shouldn't use credit for. Things that should have been on your debit card or you shouldn't even have purchased it because you don't you can't truly afford it. And Kevin, you say the right things, the right things. I'm still trying to figure out where did that flip happens happen? What happened in the life that you stopped caring about it? You knew it all along. Why would you start caring about it? <laughs> I would love to figure it out. I don't know. I'm, I I don't know. Honestly, I, just listening to you, I think that it could have been just growing up and then becoming an adult and having my own not having to depend on someone else and i think that it started out with clothes because i wanted to be seen i wanted to be noticed i think that's what started it if i had to guess if i had to pinpoint what really started the spending i would say that it was just coming from trauma of childhood bullying and high school things like that I would say that just making your own money and making good money, you're like, hey, I want to go to this party and I want so-and-so to notice me. I would say that is what in essence started it. And then somehow it just got out of control. It, it just morphed beyond clothes and morphed to everyday stuff. Thanks for being honest about it. The bullying in high school or college that you're talking about, was it related to, say, appearances that in somehow you're linking out uh, you think it, that was also was, part of it? It was mainly my sexuality. It was mainly just who I am. That's mm -hmm. been since I was a child. So that's been an ongoing theme in my life. I see. And I'm sorry about that. I just wish people will be more sensitive. But again, that's something which you shared. Bullying or people looking down or making fun or doing something. That also creates a uh, mindset where you feel, like you said, I want to be seen or I want to be seen differently. I want people to treat me differently. And that manifests itself in different ways. As in some way, you it inspires you to do something, to become something which is a good influence. But on the other side, it may also lead you to do things which you might not be very proud of down the line. Uh, so what are your plans, uh, Kevin? In terms of looking at your financial life, you did say that you want to be financially free. And we did discuss that it will require dedicated planning. You coming here and being vulnerable is a good step in that direction. Because that tells me that you are a bit serious about it. I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts around where you want your financial life to go going forward? My hope is that I have an LOC. I've had it for about two years. I'm hoping that I can figure out how to make my LOC really work and find business funding. And then I can find a way to make profit and then get these credit cards taken care of, get them wiped out and then erase them, not use them ever again and stop depending on credit card debt. But I'm, but talking to you, I realize that it's further than just credit card debt. It's having the car that I have. I also have other loans as well that I just need to wipe out as well. That's been my plan. That's been something that I haven't really talked to anybody about, but that's been 
a thought that I've had, maybe if I find business funding, I can utilize that in some way to help me. So my friend, one advice I'll give you, because I just heard you talking about business funding two, three times in this short last two minutes, not knowing all the details about your business, not saying that it's not for you, maybe for you, it may work out for you. But because I have seen the landscape, you have seen that how the stores tell you why the credit card will be great for you because they need to sell their credit card, right? Similarly, there are advertisements all over the internet which tell you that A, it's easy to get business funding and B, once you get business funding, you can use this money for this, that and make money and all that. If you are listening to people who say that, be very cautious about it because money in whatever form doesn't come easy in any way. So anybody is telling you it's easy to get money, call it either for you or for your LLC, they are not telling you the truth. So all the banks and everyone, they are wiser. If it was so easy to just form an LLC and start getting funding, everybody will do it. So there are ways and people will figure out some ways to get you some money. But end of the day, that is going to cost you. Be very careful because they are doing something which may land you in trouble. So just a general advice that don't depend too much on it. I typically see in people peddling those schemes where they will get a good cut of a fee. They will get their fee and they'll walk away and then it's you and the same story that another credit, another loan, which you are on the hook for. Having said that, trying to set up your business, credit or otherwise, but trying to set up some business, alternate sources of income is a good thought process. Do work on that. Focus less on credit, more on what, how you can set a business going, get a business going, how you can start bringing in money of your own. That's my first advice. Second is that on based on your own income, you already have enough income. So your goal should be to pay off these credit cards based on your current income and not an income that you are you might get. Because if you should surely look for alternate sources of income and generate more income. But that is for the next phase where you want to actually have money in the bank and grow. But for this credit cards, you need to get real man. You need to pay it with the income that you have today. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. And then you can do it. You have pretty good income. What about your loans, uh, Kevin? You said you have other loans outside of credit card. What are those loans? Trying to pay off the credit cards and then they're never enough to pay them off. So now I'm stuck with those two. So are those personal loans that you took from some banks? I have a, I think I just have one personal loan. It's for about 5,600 or something like that, but they added crazy interest to that. So it's like 11,000. It only touched a little bit of my credit card debt, which in the long run didn't even help because now I have more. I think I'm trying to think, I think that's my only loan. Which financial institution is this? From where you got a 5,600 loan that has ballooned to 11,000? It's not a bank. It was like a one of those. It's called One Main Financial. It's whatever those those loan places that nobody should go to. I'm learning. Okay. Yeah, I get that. They are they offer what is known as predatory loans. So they actually prey on you, and they look for people who are in difficult situation and. Uh, the way it is sold is like help. That's why I quickly jumped on the business credit that you're talking about. I'm sure somebody was talking to you at that time about personal credit or personal loan that can help you consolidate your loans, clear everything, put it in one place. Those are the terms that the industry uses. But like how you are clearly saying that didn't help. That's why I was cautioning you, your business loan will also not help. Please don't go towards that. Given your history, please, I will almost say that don't do it, the business credit either. But I'm just curious, just tell me about how did you come across them? Like, how was it sold to you? Because I know it was sold. You may believe that you bought it or you got this loan, but it was actually sold to you. So how did they manage to sell this to you? They're local and my mom has done them before. I thought I was just hoping that they could help me pay off. Like, I was hoping to consolidate my loan, my not my loans, my credit card debt into one payment. And I, my thought process was, 
not having the multiple different interest rates. But what ended up happening was I already have so much on my credit report. I already have a low credit score, so I could only get so much and I shouldn't have took it, but I did thinking it would help, but it didn't end up doing anything at all. Again, thanks for being honest. But this is another thing about consolidating debt. On paper, it's a good idea, but it requires very careful ex execution. So for everyone, you should consolidate debt only when you are being advised by somebody who you trust to be good financially prudent. If you have a relative or a friend or somebody, parent who is financially prudent, then yes. Or the best thing would be if you are being advised by a financial advisor. If they tell you you consolidate your debt, yeah, by all means. But if it's a, a one-man financial guy or a XYZ bank guy telling you, why don't you consolidate all your debt? Be very cautious because consolidation doesn't do anything. It just puts your money in one bracket, bucket. And if you do your calculation, you'll actually be paying more interest than what you were paying earlier to five different credit cards. And there will be fees for you to just get this loan. You will be paying some fees. So it's actually a bad idea. And Kevin, you are an example of what you did it. So this 5600 has become 11,000. So it looks like this has the highest credit uh, or highest rate, higher than your uh, credit cards, don't you think? Do you know what kind of rate they're charging you? Um, I can look it up while we're talking. Yeah, I'll be really interested because the credit card companies themselves charge you 30%. I really wonder what these predatory loan companies are charging. Crazy, man. So, this, Kevin, becomes your first priority then. Before your credit card, you have to get rid of this 11,000 loans. And frankly, you should not be, uh, how they say that, not be sleeping, not be eating before you get rid of this loan. This should become such a big priority because if the, this stays, you are never coming out of a financial hole. It says current interest rate is 25%. Does it say, is it annual or what? Is it APR or something else? Because... It should be something called APR. That's the real measure of how much you're actually paying, including fees and other things. I'm not sure because it just says current interest rate. It doesn't say like APR or anything like that, that okay. I've seen. Okay. Why don't you share a statement and then maybe I can look it up for you and I'll add, write back to you what I find. But what typically happens, Kevin, is APR is something which every institution should give you because APR is a measure of the net expense, that net fee that they're charging you, interest rate, and they may have, under different heads, they may be charging you, right? Fees or something else. So APR will consolidate everything and give you, this is your total outlay. I'm really surprised that this has grown so much. It has doubled from 5,600 to 11,000. So looks like they're charging you a, an arm and a leg. Are you paying anything on that? Like minimum balance or anything or... The minimum, pretty much. Prima. Yeah. I remember I spoke to you about that that method where you start with one card and go move to next. Uh, you please start with this personal loan, which is killing you. Start with that and then go to everything. And if I am in your situation and I'm bringing 10,000 a month, I will say that, assume that you only have 5,000. And this is a rough count. You can balance it a little bit. But 50% of the income is all you should try and live on and your 50% of your income should go towards handling all these debt. It may make your life very difficult but that's the only way to get out of this hole. You do it for a year or two, you can clear everything because you have good high income and hopefully your business will also start bringing some money by that. I'll just ask you a couple of quick fire kind of question and then we'll end. If you did not have these debt or you may or may not have, that's fine. But I'm just saying if money was not an issue for you, what is it that you will want to spend maximum money on? What do you desire? Money was not an issue. Tomorrow, what would you want to go out and spend a lot of money on? I guess just furthering myself, trying to better myself and my career. 
I don't really want to spend any more money. So I, I guess I'm going to save it. Is That's going to be my answer. I don't want to spend a lot. <laughs> so you think you have been burned? That tells me that at least going forward, you're going to be careful, which which is good. And your willingness to spend money on yourself also is uh, commendable because sometimes when we are short on money, we don't feel like spending any money. But some of the key expenses, particularly when it's learning new skill, something that can bring more money is an investment that we struggle with. But those kind of investments really pay off. So actually, that's a good answer. Conversely speaking, Kevin, in last couple of years, what was what has been your max uh, biggest expense where you have actually spent a lot of money? Probably my personal traveling, probably like flights or um, home stuff. I did have to have, I had to have new flooring put in. I had a new air conditioning unit put in, a heating system. Those are like regular expenses or necessary expenses, but you can't think of something where you splurged on yourself or, or somebody you love. I would, just say, I would just say me going to a lot of events, like traveling, like not for work, but personally, like flights to different events and um, things that aren't necessarily for for work. They're more for personal, for leisure. But those also, you said, are mostly networking kind of events, right? You are not going to music concerts and all that, or are you? I have, but I don't a lot. That was more in my early 20s. <laughs> okay. okay. You don't do any more. So like I said, I, I took another look at your statements. I only see smaller expenses, a lot of them, and that's where you have an opportunity. How do you reduce those and fix a budget for yourself, man? You can... The best thing going for you is that you have high income. So you can quickly come out of it. I respect that you came on this call and you shared all of this because that's the first step, confronting it head on. Make a list of uh, the loans that you have that you need to take care of. Car is something which you can do quickly and the predatory loan is something which you must do first and then eventually one after another you can get rid of your card. So you can definitely do it and keep trying to grow your income. I wish you all the best. If there is anything I can help with or any advice that you need even down the line, feel free to write to me or talk to me. I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much. Thank you. You take care. Thank you. Thank you.